Hello YouTube, I'm Plank2G, and today I want to discuss with you a touchy subject amongst the old school RuneScape community and gaming in general, toxicity and mental health. I believe there is a correlation between the two and a lack of knowledge about mental health in general. Today I'm going to talk about the elephant in the room, gaming, behavior, mental health, and I don't mean that in a hallucinating kind of way, but one that probably hits home for something you have probably experienced. This is a complex and touchy topic, so buckle up buttercup. Old School RuneScape has a vastly diverse community, from age, geographical location, culture, language, beliefs, and socioeconomic class. This is the game where some first world residents make an absurd amount of money, or how some third world residents struggle to put food on the table and have a place to call home. There are people from every corner of the globe playing Old School RuneScape. Whether it's acknowledged or not, Old School RuneScape has one of the most diverse communities. And amongst its own community, there are sub-communities. These sub-communities are often called clans, and it's been a part of RuneScape since its inception. It's the easiest and most efficient way to meet people with the same interests as you. Whether it's PVM, PKing, skilling, people to hang out with, those are just a few. In every community, you have people that enjoy helping you, some that stand by and watch, and others that are toxic and inflict pain to others, whether intentional or not. Behavior is shaped by past experiences and also mental health. This is a key statement that I'll come back to later. If you've been in an old school RuneScape clan, you've probably experienced drama stemming from one or two people consistently. This drama can be over a person's RNG, perceived tone to direct messages, ditching someone for someone else, such as having a raiding party, and then kicking one person out for another, loading gear for too long, scamming, or even verbal abuse. If you haven't experienced it in a video game, then you may have experienced it in real life. You could be texting someone and they misinterpret your message, or they get unproportionately upset over something that's seemingly innocent and simple. To better understand where this toxicity comes from, we need to understand some basic psychology first. Maslow's hierarchy of needs is an idea that basic needs, safety needs, and psychological needs have to be met before being able to become the best version of you that you can possibly be through self-realization. This means that food, water, shelter, sex, safety, relationships, and feelings of accomplishment must be met before a person can reach their peak performance. Behavior changes and problems can arise when one or more of these needs are not met. People react and behave to a stimulus or situation because of genetics, their environment, and past experiences during development. Think of a time when something went horribly wrong and you decided to never do that again or be prepared for that event, such as having a spare tire and knowing how to change it. Some people do not like to be screamed at or scolded because of childhood experiences as well. These experiences have often led to a basic foundational need not being met, whether it's food, water, safety, or good relationships. Tying this back to toxicity, that RNG-based rage someone directed at you, they may have been left out during an activity growing up, or they may have extraordinary life circumstances going on that do not make them feel secure right now. Or it could be a cry for help. Multiple national population surveys have found that about half of those who experience a mental illness during their lives will also experience a substance use disorder and vice versa. This is a staggering statistic from drugabuse.gov and it correlates substance abuse and mental illness. Traditionally, substances are viewed as things you put into your body to have a desired effect. But do you think that video games could be considered a substance? Or at least used in a similar way to self-medicate. Addiction is when someone cannot stop seeking a pleasure, whether it be drugs, alcohol, food, sex, or even video games. The brain desires more and more of the pleasure hormone called dopamine, which is released when a person engages in their pleasurable activity. Addiction is also prevalent, but not necessarily as directly correlated like substance abuse and undiagnosed mental illness. Addiction has multiple risk factors, including your genetics, environment, and biological development. So how does this all tie back to the old school RuneScape community, or even the gaming community as a whole? Video games are a controlled set of goals and accomplishments set by you. There are rarely extenuating circumstances that keep you from accomplishing these goals that mean so much to you. It's an almost guaranteed source of dopamine. It's evident in RuneScape. When referring to toxicity, this is most common whenever you impede someone from completing their goal. It could be something from learning a new boss, 
getting that pet drop, receiving that ever so rare twisted bow, achieving the prestigious 99, or it might even be a simple goal such as hitting base 40 stats. Sometimes there's an unhealthy amount of time spent trying to achieve these goals to the point where it affects daily lives like forgetting to eat, not doing laundry, neglecting real life relationships, or affecting your job performance. Sometimes RuneScape is used as an escape from reality, a way to not deal with whatever problems or feelings. Sometimes it's a way to cope without seeing a professional. I believe this is a form of self-medicating and displays a generational lack of coping mechanisms. Our generation generally accepts video games as a way to cope. Let's face it, our generation has always had video games as a way to cope, whether it's a bad day at school, a bad day at work whenever we were teenagers, or even now. I feel like most of us were never guided to learning proper coping mechanisms. And unless you seeked it out yourself, most were not going to teach you. RuneScape gives a sense of safety and security. It's something that's easy to control. I haven't even touched on anxiety or depression and its effects. In summary, I believe that toxicity has its roots in a player's past, present, or current insecure situation. This is not an excuse for their toxic behavior, but it may give you a little insight as to why people act the way they do. I am not implying or stating that RuneScape itself is addictive, like heroin, cocaine, or methamphetamine. I'm just attempting to shed some light on some mental health issues that are prevalent in the gaming community. I want you to think about why you play RuneScape, or video games in general. I want you to think about your past experiences and present struggles. Do they affect what or how long you play? Do they affect what you do on a daily basis? RuneScape in video games can be a great coping mechanism for life's daily stressors, but it can also consume you whenever you're attempting to hide and bury much deeper thoughts and feelings. So I leave it to you to make your own opinion and to do your own research. Join me back in episode 2 to hear some interviews from close RuneScape friends of mine. Just like the rest of the RuneScape community, they are from all over the world and all different backgrounds. I hope I see you guys there.